I always start off by cutting the power off. Got my little handy breaker finder. This is a little climb one right here. Does a great job. I've had it for years. Run it over the breakers and they come back and it tells you which one to cut off. And avoids me having to have somebody outside or yelling back and forth. Hey, which breaker is it? Switching half the ones off in the house and did it get it? Did it get it? Look, the lights off. I know the breakers off. Know the powers off. Daryl, also known as the finisher. Let's get it in. Y'all see me, man? I was growing a beard out, man. This, I had a break. But anytime to break now, man, got to get caught up. So first things first, got to get this outlet out of here. And these were put in when the house was built. So, you know, these are the ones that they got the stab connectors in the back where they stab the wires into. So if I got plenty of wire in the box, I just cut them off. I just cut them off and get them up out of there. Now here I use my reciprocating saw blade. All I'm doing is when the, when the boxes are installed, when they build the house, they nail them to a stud. So I'm checking to see which side the stud is on. So I know where I'm going to cut the nails off. There's normally one nail at the top, one nail at the bottom. So reach in with your, uh, with your reciprocating saw blade, cut the nail off there, turn it over, cut the nail off. And I hate when I do that. <laughs> I go up into the drywall just a little bit, but that's I'll you know, I'll take care of that. That's no big problem. I just, I just hate to do that. Then you get want to get the, get the wires freed up. And which kind of all leads me to my discussion to, for today is, and it's something I'm noticing on YouTube that just happens a lot. <laughs> it is, it's kind of, it's kind of funny to me is that no matter how you do something, no matter how right you do something, there's always somebody that's a writer. <laughs> and I know writer's going to be our word. Okay. All right. I know it's not a real word, but what, it's going to be a word here today. Now, come on, y'all. We got to understand something. There's more than one way to get a job done. Right? This is the fireplace. Of course, the TV is going to be mounted above the fireplace. Outlet down there. I need an outlet behind the TV. So I, what I always do, now this is just a personal thing, nothing that nobody else has to do, but I always put four, like I always put two outlets. So that way, you know, you can plug in your TV. If you got a Roku stick or, you know, fire stick or something, you can plug that in. And then who knows, in the future, you might want to put your put your cable box behind your TV. You might want to put a few things. So in that case, it's, it's easier for me to just go ahead and put two outlets up now. than I mean, later on and then try to add stuff in it, it's just unnecessary. So I always personally put two outlets in back there, right? Checking to find the studs. I already know where the stud on the side is and we're just going to get this cut open, but it's just insane to me. It's insane to me that for some reason, people think that their way, the way that they do something is the only way you can possibly do something. It's, it's insane to me, right? I, I just said earlier, I removed that outlet. Now those outlets though, 99.9% .9 of contractors, electrical contractors use those outlets when they're building a the house. Now, when I do one of these jobs or something similar, I use a more premium outlet. It has, you know, I'll show you the little later but it, it costs a little more. Now, does that make me right and them wrong? Of course not. <laughs> of course it doesn't. I, you know, I'm doing one outlet. If I'm doing a big a house or a building, I can't put premium outlets in the house unless the customer's gonna upgrade the outlets. And how many customers wanna upgrade outlets? <laughs> you know what I mean? None. Now, just let me tell you what I'm doing. I got my driver, I have a, an auger bit and usually I use about a usually it's five eighths if I'm only running one wire I usually use a five eighths bit I take it back to about the center of the stud and then you know you gotta just drill your hole through now I cut the hole in the wall on one side I always cut it I gotta have it big enough to fit my driver through right into the hole with the bit then on the other side of the stud pack or you know if it was even if it's just one stud I try to cut it as close to the stud as possible I don't like the drywall repair to be close to where I'm going to put the outlet just because it makes the repair have to go into the outlet where hole where the outlet is and it's just unnecessary. So I always keep that distance. So right there, you see, I'm, that's where I'm going to put my box. I don't have to cut the hole in the drywall all the way over to where the box is. I always, I don't care if it's a light I'm, in, I'm installing or what. I never take the drywall repair all the way over to whatever I'm installing. I mean, 
I think it keeps the repair. It just makes it cleaner and it just makes it for an easier repair. So now this is where the electrical box is going to go. Now back to the outlet. I mean, does that make me right? If I install a, you know, a super outlet there because I'm installing three, I'm installing three total, right? I'm not installing 50 or, or, or 25. It's a huge difference. So, but does that make them right and me writer? No, 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 we're, we're, we're both right. We're both right. One's not right and one's not wrong. Or one's not writer or nothing like that. We, we both install an outlet. So it just is what it is. And it's okay for them to be right and for me to be right. Or even if you're not doing a job in bulk and you're just installing one outlet and you use the cheaper ones, there's nothing wrong with that either. It's a preference. All right, this situation right here. Now you see I got the wire ran through the wall or, or I ran through the stud. Now I have to run it down the wall. Now I like using the magnet pull system to see the heavy magnet on the, that I tape to the end of the wire. And then I just pull it down. It works great for me. I've done it on other videos, even on walls like this where there's insulation in the wall. You gotta work with it a little bit, but this works great for me. But this ain't the only system. This ain't the only way to get the wire down. Before I knew anything, <laughs> I tried to fish the wire down and some, I would always get stuck and I'd end up having to cut an extra hole in between the top drywall hole and wherever the outlet was coming out. I'd have to cut an extra hole in the middle and patch there. It's just, you know, hey, you live and learn, right? But this is how I do it now, right? You could use, I don't, you could use fish stick. You use whatever you use, whatever system works great for you, you use it. Does that make you wrong and me right or whatever? No, we, as long as the wire gets from the top of the wall to the bottom, it comes out where it's supposed to come out. It's right, <laughs> it's, it's right. I always try to encourage people to, you know, there are different levels of people. There's people just starting out watching these videos, DIY people, you know, just people at all sorts of different levels doing this stuff. And I, I always say, hey, I mean, watch my stuff. If you like it, try it my way. If not, but also, but look at other videos, try different methods and try to see what you like. And then uh, go on to perfecting your, crafting your style. So, but if you, if you like what somebody does and you just want to do that, do it. Like in the end, it's all going to work out for everybody. Here we go. Getting this outlet in, man, that dude needs a shave. If you haven't seen this, these are called, this is an old work electrical box. Um, that when you tighten the screws, they, they pull the connector on and it kind of squeezes it onto the back of the drywall. So, and that's what holds it in place. So you can use them anywhere in a wall that there's drywall, except of course on a stud. And that's kind of my setup right here in this house. I am actually doing a lot of other, other things. I'm, I'm painting the wall, the ceiling, I'm, you know, changing the blinds out. I'm doing all kinds of things. So if you're wondering that normally, you know, when I say, you know, you need a vacuum when you're cutting the drywall and things of that nature in this room, I'm not worried about it. Cause I I'm sealed off for the rest of the house and I'm doing everything in this room. So this is just kind of how I decided to start the room. What I'm doing now, I'm adding a couple extra wires for the outlets. So basically you have a black and white you that, that are hot and the neutral. They're coming into the box. I add a wire that goes into one outlet and a wire that goes into the other outlet. And they're both feeding off of the main line that's coming into the box. And I do that for the hot and I do it for a neutral. And then I do it for the ground. Now this is a more premium outlet. Like you can stab the wires into the back of the outlet, but they don't get locked in when you stab them in. You still gotta tighten down the sides. These are a little more heavy duty, a little more premium. They're just the ones that I like to use. And since for me, the difference in the price from the cheaper ones to these, I mean, there is not much. It's things, something I can roll into the price. I also explain to the customer how, what kind of outlets I'm using. So they understand that <laughs> these are a little more heavy duty. Now, 
I don't want to give off the impression that they're in all circumstances. There's no wrong way to do something because I know that some people are professionals at missing the point. I mean, take this outlet, for instance, there's definitely a wrong way to install this thing, but whether you use wire nuts or Wagos to connect all the wires in the back, it, it, it really doesn't matter. No person is wrong. It's a preference at this point. It's whatever one you like to do, right? Whichever method you like. I'm, I'm really stressing this because I'm seeing what, what I like to call a lot of people are suffering from non sequitur brain. Okay. So basically, you know, whatever their profession is, whatever they do, they become the expert of all experts. I mean, an Oracle, if you will, but there's a problem. The conclusion, their conclusion is based on a fallacy. Hence the non sequitur. Let me give you an example. Tom Brady is a great quarterback and he's right-handed, which must mean that if you're right-handed, you'll be a great quarterback too. <laughs> no, no, nah, that's not the way it works. Unfortunately, you know, and we had a lot of people out here that think this way for some reason, especially in these trades and some of these trades that their way is the only way. And I think that doesn't help anybody. If I would have been listening to people like that, I wouldn't even started in the business because I definitely didn't have all the tools. I didn't have the, the truck that was wrapped or the trailer or all the things. I didn't have everything ready. So if that was the case, I just wouldn't have started because it wasn't the right time. And I, you know, I, I got had people online saying that, you know, you're looking ridiculous out there if you have some kind of refrigerator magnet stuck on the side of your truck. <laughs> I did think that was pretty funny though. You know, I like my refrigerator magnet, leave it alone. All right. As you see, those two outlets are finished. I'm just adjusting them. And now I'm going to put the other outlet at the bottom. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm going to say, if you don't know electrical, then like I said, there are ways to learn. Outlets aren't difficult. There are ways to learn it and you know plenty of channels out there that'll teach you step-by-step -step stuff like installing outlets so it's not difficult but you got to know more about it than just white to white and black to black because you're going to open it up the box up there's going to be a red wire in there or there's going to be a bunch of extra wire, and you're not going to understand what's going on so now all the electric is done now it's time to fix the drywall <laughs> which whew, some of these drywall guys got non sequitur brain to the max. Shout out big job. First thing first, if you want to cut the drywall back to the studs every time, Hey, and it makes you happy, do that. It's unnecessary as far as I'm concerned, but Hey, I'm not the Oracle. You know what I'm saying? Do what you please. Also keep in mind that when you run that wire through the wall, and this is just a PSA, when you run that wire through the wall, you have to keep it back at least an inch and a quarter from the front of the stud, right? It's the minimum. So that, and that's because when you put your drywall in and use drywall screws and things of that nature, they won't hit that wire in the wall. If you can't do that, then you gotta put metal plates in the front. I'm using the same piece of drywall. I just put it back up. And then what I usually do is that if it's nice and, and, and clean, then I'll just go ahead and put the tape up. But if it's not, then I'll go along any edges that are frayed and just cut off any of the paper that got a little messed up because I just don't want any paper sticking up in any kind of way. To make sure that whatever mud I use sticks, I'll sand it because it had a sheen on it. It was, uh, I, I think it was satin on these walls. Now I'm gonna fill the cracks with, this is 20 minute mud. And then I'll put embed the tape in there and then put another layer of mud over that. I'm also in, which I usually don't do, but I'm gonna dry this one back with a heat gun. Normally I use my little heater, put it up there, but I needed to go a little faster than that today because I was I was gonna try to get all the paint done in one day. I ended up not being able to, but that's what I was going for. I wanted to get all the layers, get it sanded and, and painted all in one day. Didn't happen because I had a change of plans, but I did get the drywall completely sanded and everything ready to be painted but then I had to end up leaving. But um, man, there's nothing I hate worse than standing in, in, in with a heat gun. So cue the elevator music, please. Now this is the second layer. 
I always like to do three layers. It's, it's just what I like to do. Now, can you do it in two layers? I, maybe somebody can, but for me to get the best finish that I like, that, like I said, it dis completely disappears, it works best for me when I do three layers. Now, it's usually two layers of hot mud, last layer plus three. Cue the elevator music. All right, thank goodness that's over. So now this layer is just a thin layer of plus three. Because for me, in my area, there hardly anybody has texture on the walls. It's all flat walls, just painted surface. So you have to be super, super flat when you do these walls, right? So for me, sanding this plus three is great because it, it is very easy to sand and it has a super smooth texture. And just to show you how flat it is, that's that's it i haven't sanded yet haven't sanded so you know anybody who thinks i, I put too much mud up okay <laughs> whatever it's it's super flat already then i like using a fine sanding sponge getting it super smooth so that when you go to paint it i mean it just disappears like there's no trace of it now you do have to put primer on it some kind of primer I use, I like to show William that you got some primer block or pro, I'm sorry, is it pro block? I'll put it on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. But it's my favorite primer right now. Uh, I use the light sideways so you can see any imperfection. I want every single imperfection gone. So it doesn't matter what light you see it in, it's gonna look perfect. I didn't use a hawk in a trial. I like to use a drywall knife. Is one superior over the other? To me, it doesn't matter. It's whatever one you feel comfortable with. <laughs> Some people want to do hot mud for the whole thing and then wet sand it and all that. I, I've never seen nobody do it on a video yet, but that's what a lot of people say that they do. I don't do it that way because it just doesn't matter to me. I do it my way and it always turns out perfect. And guess what I show? When it's finished, I show you the finished product after it's painted. You see me painting over that spot. So the paint is still going to be wet, but the repair is going to disappear, as you already see. So to all my non-sequitur brain brethren out there who have this mentality that, well, I good at drywall, and I do good job. And if you don't do drywall my way, you don't know what you're doing. Man, kill that noise, and we'll all just learn together. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Complete a job drywall repairs disappear that's what i love to see all right daryl also known as the finisher stay safe be blessed and remember if the trades don't work nothing else does